Sandy here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing with you a little project that you could make for your mom. Now, um, or you could make it for yourself. So I have just a blank traveler's notebook. Um, nothing special, just a blank one. And then I have one of these newer stamp sets from Brutus Monroe called Balloon Ride. Um, I also have some Raven Detail ink and a couple of Chroma Mists. I'm going to make this uh, traveler's notebook for uh, myself because I am a mom um, but you could make this for your mom as a little gift you could make it for anyone so let's see what I can do all right you guys this is one of those times where I thought I was recording and it did not happen I just used my Brutus Monroe Raven detail ink with the stamps and stamped on the front side of this uh, traveler's notebook insert. Now I am using the chroma mists to paint with so I am not a particularly great colorist um, with colored pencils and markers and shading and all of that fun stuff not not really um, my strong suit um, but I love to paint and um, have painted since I was a little girl with my grandmother. She uh, owned a ceramic studio. So painting is just fun for me. Not that I am some sort of artist with paint either, but it feels more natural to paint than it does to color with shading and blending and all that kind of good stuff. It just feels more natural to use paint. Now, chroma mists are not paints. They are sprays, but they are perfect for painting with. Um, they're a like they're just a great medium, you guys. It's a dye-based uh, ink, um, and it's water reactive, uh, so you can uh, use water with it and to lighten it. Um, if you want it to have lighter shades, uh, you can also mix the shades together, which is something I do uh, for this video. So I create like teals and different color greens and it just works out really awesomely. So I am dipping directly into the chroma mist to color in the clouds. Um, I find it funny. Um, I can't tell you um, I can't tell you why clouds are white, right? But for some reason, when you color, or even as a child, you always made the clouds blue because your paper was white. So um, I guess that just still sticks with me um, to paint them blue. Now I am using a pretty thin bristled brush, um, and that is because there are super teeny areas that I am going to be painting in. Um, my suggestion with paint brushes, if you aren't doing a particular technique that you need a certain brush for, um, is to find a paintbrush that just feels comfortable to you. So if you are more comfortable with painting with a smaller brush, use that. If you're more comfortable painting with a larger brush, use that. You just gotta test it out and uh, just, just do what works for you. So I am going to go ahead and paint straight off the edge here of um, the, the Traveler's Notebook insert here. And uh, that's because I want it to look like this was a patterned cover. Like I want it to look like it came this way. Um, so I did stamp off the edges. I did make sure to have clouds go off the edges, balloons go off the edges. But the sentiment uh, that says the sky is the limit is definitely not off the edge. It is right there for you uh, to go ahead and see. Now, never fear, I'm not going to make you watch me uh, mix the colors and paint every single uh, little bit of this cover. Um, that does get pretty tedious. I know that some people really enjoy watching painting happen, um, but I'm not really doing anything magical with the paint here. Guys, I'm just filling in the, uh, the spaces here. There's no magical happy little trees or anything like that happening. Um... So now I'm just going to 
uh, fill this in and I just love it. And um, my notebook is thick enough that the paint is not going through uh, to the inside cover. If it did go through the inside cover, the only thing I would do would, would be to adhere the first page to that cover. Um, that way you wouldn't even see it. I am going to go ahead and use my heat tool to uh, heat this up so that it dries uh, because I have decided that I'm not going to leave it like this. I'm going to make it shiny. Now, when you make it shiny, it does make the, um, it does alter the color, so it makes it darker. I'm going to use some Brutus Monroe embossing ink, and I do try out the refill um, just to see if it is going to smear. And I do it on that little cloud because I figured I could always cover it up with something if the embossing ink pad made the stuff smear. Didn't think it was going to make it smear because I did heat tool it up, but I just I just needed to see. So I'm applying that uh, ink pad all over the front of the cover. Um, and then I'm going to grab the triple thick embossing dip and I'm going to use this um, to really give me a good, thick, shiny uh, surface. Now look at that. That embossing powder is thick. And I decide that I'm going to heat from underneath. Um, that way the the thrust of the air coming out of the heat embosser is not going to blow the embossing powder all over the place because it will otherwise um, because the granules are so large they just go whoof, right on off. Now I do uh, put a couple layers of this ultra thick or triple thick I'm sorry embossing uh, down on it um, and that is just because I want it to be super super shiny uh, and super smooth so I am going to go ahead and do that and you can kind of see how much darker the pieces are now this uh, notebook is going to go in uh, my traveler's notebook that I use uh, on the regular for doing my um, scrappy videos and stuff like that um, and the traveler's notebook that I use is purple, so all of this purple color uh, coordinated great with it. I am only doing the front of the book because, um, you know, that's the way I felt like I wanted to do it was just the front. So that's what I did. Now I am going to put this uh, triple thick embossing uh, powder back into the... Um, into the jar. I add another layer of the embossing uh, ink pad and I'm going to layer on another layer of the triple thick. And again, I am going to heat from the back side and what that is going to do um, is allow that powder not to fly out all over the place. So we're going to bring it back out. You should be able to see it in a second. And it has this nice thick shininess to it. And it has, it has, it doesn't just feel like paper. Like it feels like more like a book book now instead of, um, instead of just a little paper notebook. So I need it to smooth out a couple of things. And then that is going to do it guys. There is your, uh, Traveler's Notebook insert makes a great little gift inside of a Traveler's Notebook. So there it is. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you again real soon for another video.